the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Most High. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the High Priest and Savior of Israel. And Rahakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honest the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect, all you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is things will get a lot worse before they get better. And this is going to be in response to, you know, you have a lot of people that read the Bible, they read the scriptures, and they believe in this doctrine where the church is going to get raptured up through the destruction and they're not going to see any hard times. They're not going to see any tribulation. That's that's for the non-believers. That's for people that are going to purgatory. Then they're going to go to hell and all, all sorts of weird doctrines that come from the Catholic Church. But you also have Jake. You have Israelites that are of the circumcision that know they're Israelites and they believe that they're going to be working a nine to five when the Lord comes back. They believe that everything's going to be OK as long as I know I'm an Israelite, as long as I, you know, keep certain commandments I'm not going to see tribulation and the scriptures speak against that. The prophets speak against that. And everything we've been prophesying is coming to pass right now. We're in the beginning stages of that tribulation. And, you know, if you're watching videos, if you're part of a camp, if you if you know you're an Israelite and you know about the things that are coming, you should be preparing your mind for these things. You shouldn't be preparing your mind to be comfortable. That This truth is all about being uncomfortable. And the scripture says that we must not might, not may, not sort of kind of we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the most high. That's very, that's very poignant, man. If you don't understand that the kingdom of heaven is going to proceed a great destruction and tribulation, then what are you in the truth for? What are you preparing your mind for? What's, what are you really thinking about? Where's your spirit? You know, it tells you in Isaiah 33 and six, we bring it out all the time that wisdom and knowledge will be your stability of that times. Why, why are you going to need stability? Because all hell is going to be broken loose. There's going to be famines. There's going to be great death. Everything we've been reading in the prophecies, man. What? Hey, man. Let me let me get this in uh, in Second Thessalonians. This is the second letter to the Thessalonians, chapter one, verse two. Grace unto you and peace from the Most High, our Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. We are bound to thank the Most High always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. And the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of the Most High, which is today known as Great Millstone, and all the churches that follow the correct doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's the church, not these harlot houses where they celebrate white Jesus. It says, so that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of the Most High for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of the Most High. Let me read that again. It says, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of the Most High for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of the Most High, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of the Most High, for which ye also suffer. So there's a great suffering that comes with the kingdom. And that's that starts right now with this ministry. When you put off the ways of this world, you make yourself a prey to these people that are still joined on the Babylon the Great. They're still joined on the Esau and all his wicked philosophies. You make yourself a prey to these people, and that comes with persecution. And it's going to intensify. It's going to increase. As this world gets worse and worse and more and more broken down, you being uh, prophesying against this world and you having a joy of the world to come, a world that's going to follow this current world, this current age, that's going to make you even more of a target. It's going to make you a target from your family, your so-called friends, the people in the world, the government, your enemy number one, your enemy of the state. If you believe in Yahweh Shai and his resurrection and the prophecies written in the Holy Scriptures, you're going to be a target, man. This is not This is not a game. This is not a joke. We're not... Uh, cosplaying. We're not dressing up just for the fun of it. This is actually going to lead to the worst destruction that's ever been documented in human history. It's going to be worse than the fall of Rome. It's going to be worse than ancient Egypt, man. Scriptures tell you in Jeremiah 16 that we're not even going to talk about the, the destruction of ancient Egypt in the 
the kingdom. We're going to be glorifying the destruction of the spiritual Egypt, which is Babylon the Great. Speaking of Jeremiah, let me let me get this real quick because this is this is all we talk about, man. This is a a very straightforward, straight into the point prophecy. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter thirty, verse six. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child? Question mark. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Question mark. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So you see here, salvation coincides a great destruction. It says he shall be saved out of it. Who is the he? The remnant, the elect of the nation of Israel, you people of so-called Negro and native Indian descent, you're the 12 tribes of Israel, as well as the remnant of our people that are scattered amongst the nations. There's a small number in comparison to the amount of destruction. There's a small number that are going to be saved. So it says, alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. What's another word for trouble? Tribulation. Okay, you see Jacob's trouble followed by he shall be saved out of it. Saved out of what? Jacob's trouble. We're going to be saved out of a tribulation. We're not going to be cruising into the kingdom. We're not, you know, there's not going to be an alarm sound. Okay, today's the day of the Lord. And since you're a man of the Lord, you just put your shades on and just waltz into the kingdom. You know, you you got that uh, that Dave Chappelle skit where he's walking in the club in slow motion and Isaiah 4 and 1, he's just, you know, slow motion picking which woman he wants. He's moving other women out of the way and everything. Everything's just a, a disco ball strobe light and every everybody's cool. Everybody's dancing. The music is beautiful. That's not Jacob's trouble, man. Jacob's trouble is going to be absolutely horrific. The men that get delivered from this destruction, the scripture tells you that the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Scarcely meaning barely. You're just going to make it by the skin of your teeth. What does that mean, man? There's going to be a great destruction. You can't get comfortable just because you know you're an Israelite or just because you so-called believe in the Bible or, you know, sweet Jesus and all of this all of this madness that's designed to make you comfortable with this world. The scriptures, the understanding of the scriptures are known as the comforter because you're supposed to be comforted by the kingdom. You're not supposed to be comforted by your job, by your woman, whatever situation you have right now is going to be taken from you. You have to know that, Jake. If you call yourself an Israelite, if you call yourself believing in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you have to know that there's going to be a great tribulation. You have to know that things are going to get a lot worse before they get better. The better is not coming first. You have to prepare your mind for these things. You have to prepare your mind for it. You're going to lose your job. You're going to have a point where there's no food on the shelves. You're going to be put in some very uncomfortable, awkward situations. And you have to prepare your mind for these things. If not, what are you doing? Matter of fact, let me get this in Ezra. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 9. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? Question mark. So the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a great inheritance that you have to earn. You have to, you know, ultimately it, it comes down to pre-election, predetermination. You have to be preordained to receive the kingdom of heaven. But the most high has it set up to where men are going to earn their place in the kingdom. Right now it starts with this ministry, teaching, you know, laying of hands, certain gifts, different brothers have different offices in the ministry. But ultimately the kingdom of heaven is going to come through much tribulation. That's what you should be preparing your mind for, Jake. How are you going to receive an inheritance without passing the danger that's set before it? This is uh, the book of Baruch chapter four. I'm going to start at verse 29. For he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. So the topic here is salvation and the most high, the one who brought these plagues upon us, the ones who brought the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, as well as the rest of the curses in the scriptures. He's the one who brought these curses upon us, and he's the one who's going to bring forth salvation. It says, take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Now, here's the point right here. Verse 31, miserable, miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable, miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. So, all the nations that we were scattered to, every city, every principality, every state, every country, they're going to be miserable. What does that mean? You know, uh, Elder Yashawama makes this point all the time. We're prophesying against Babylon, but we need Babylon to live. One of the curses of Deuteronomy 28 is that we would go to our enemy for the want of all things. So if our enemy is being taken down, 
and we go to our enemy for the one of all things, what does that mean? We're going to be put in highly uncomfortable situations. Certain brothers are going to be living off grid. We're going to be having to rely on each other, our brotherhood, you know, mercy from the most high, obviously, but we're going to be in a, a highly uncomfortable situation. We're going to face tribulation. There's no, there's no way around this. If the cities that we reside in are going to be miserable and we live there, what does that mean? We're going to face tribulation, Akim. You have to prepare your mind for that. Let me read this again. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 31. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall, which is the heathen. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons, which is chiefly Babylon the Great. That's where the great destruction and the great deliverance is going to take place. So, again, if you're prophesying against Babylon and you live in Babylon, that means you're going to go through the same tribulation as the two thirds and the heathen. The only difference is, as we read in Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, but he shall be saved out of it. OK, everyone else is going to be caught up in it. So the tribulation is coming, Akim, regardless of whether you serve the Lord or not, regardless of whether you call on the name, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai or not, there's still going to be a great tribulation. The only difference is the elect, the remnant shall be saved out out of it. That's what we're preaching. That's what we're prophesying. And that's what our hope is. That's our hope is in deliverance from destruction. Our hope is not in no destruction. We don't have a hope and faith in nothing happening. We don't like, we're not doing this because we believe, well, look, if I serve the Lord, nothing's going to happen to me. No, something's going to happen to you. The, the difference is you have a deliverer, you have a savior, you have something to, to hope for outside of that. You, you might find your neck in a guillotine, you might find yourself in a, a concentration camp, a detention center. You might find yourself somewhere without food, but you're going to have hope. You're going to know that the Lord is going to deliver you out of that situation. He never promised that we would never be put in that situation in the first place. I mean, look at Daniel, man. Look at all the men of the Lord in the scriptures. They were all tested. They were all tried and they were proven worthy. This is, uh, this is the book of Sirach chapter 2, verse 10. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any man trust in Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai and was confounded? Question mark. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Question mark. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Question mark. For Yahweh is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins, and saveth in time of affliction. And saveth in time of affliction. That's the point right there. He saves from a time of affliction. He doesn't save you out of nothing. What is the purpose of salvation if you're already good, if you're already comfortable, if you're cool, if you're not going through any tribulation, what is the Lord saving you from? It says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? No, man. All the men of the Lord, even if they were put to death, they were still delivered ultimately because we serve a God of the living, which means what? If you get put to death serving a God of the living, you're going to be resurrected. And we have full faith in that, man. There's no L's that are going to be taken in the kingdom of heaven. Your works are going to follow you. That doesn't mean nothing bad, so-called bad is ever going to happen to you. It means that there's, there's a victory at the end of all that. And the last victory that we're going to have is we're going to conquer death because Yahweh was resurrected. He conquered death. So if we're joint heirs with him, what does that mean? We don't fe we don't fear anything but Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. If you're approaching Jacob's trouble with this idea that nothing bad's going to happen to me, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what what Bible you're reading. Uh, you know, the men of the Lord were were brutally put to death. So I mean, if we're coming in their stead, that's there's, there's a possibility that that could happen to you. So. You need to prepare your mind for these things, Jake. This is uh, this is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3. Actually, let me read this in Isaiah first. I want to make a quick point here. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword. This is talking about the Most High. He's going to number Israel to the sword for their disobedience. He says, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. So this is a prophecy dealing with the two-thirds, the non-believers, those that didn't take heed to the doctrine, those that didn't take heed to the Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and his voice, which he calls through the prophets. Verse 13, Therefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Now, what's going on here is the division between the believers and the non-believers. The believers, the servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, are going to eat during a famine. We're going to drink during a famine. We're going to rejoice during a time of 
great mourning and misery. But what does that mean? Does that mean we're not going to experience any of these things at all? We're never going to go hungry. We're never going to be in a situation where there's no food. We're never going to be in a situation where our loved ones get taken from us. No, these things are still going to happen. The difference is, again, going back to Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, but he shall be saved out of it. So you might find yourself in a position where there's no food anywhere around you. And you, you might feel like, wait a minute, what's going on? The Lord is just trying you at that moment. He could feed you at any given moment. He could feed you, you know, with a, a bird can bring you food. There's, there's a million ways that the Lord can feed his servants. But the point is, you're not supposed to be preparing your mind that, you know, no rough situation is ever going to happen to you. You should be preparing your mind that if the Lord does put me in such a situation, he's going to find a way to escape. He's going to find a way to deliver. That's the whole point of it. It's not... The Lord never promised us that we would never have any hardships. He promised us that we'd be delivered. That's his name. Yahawashai. Yah meaning he. Hawashai meaning deliverer. Salvation. He's the deliverer and he's going to deliver on his promise. This is the book of Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 8. Was Yahweh displeased against the rivers? Question mark. Was thine anger against the rivers? Question mark. Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thy horses and thy chariots of salvation? Question mark. So you see the chariots of salvation are going to accompany such a great destruction that even the rivers, the lakes, all the waters of Babylon, the great, they're going to be destroyed. So again, we're going to be saved out of a great destruction. We're going to be saved out of a great tribulation. It's not, it's not enough for us to just, okay, we believe in the Lord. So nothing bad is going to happen. No, everywhere you live is going to be melted with fervent heat. You're going to be delivered from a great destruction. If you are of the elect, it says, this is verse 13. It says, thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. So again, this is talking about salvation of the elect of Israel. It says, thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Salah. So we know, according to Malachi 1 and 4, uh, Job 9 and 24, wicked are the Edomites, self-proclaimed white people. This is their society. This is their house. And the Most High is going to wound the house of the wicked. So what does that mean? If we live in the house of the wicked and he's going to wound the head out of the house of the wicked, all the things that we rely on, you know, electricity, the, the electricity is going to go out, man. Esau is going to, you know, the grid's not going to work. We're going to be off grid, literally. He's going to, you're not going to have a YouTube channel. You're not going to have a bunch of views. You're not, whatever you hold on to in this world, the Most High is going to take it from you because ultimately he's taking that from Esau. So everything that we rely on from Esau is going to be taken from us subsequently. So if you rely on a so-called white man, his, his groceries, his gasoline, his electricity, his whatever he has going on in this society, when the Most High takes it from him, you're going to be left out in the cold too. That's why you have to have faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. If you only have faith in what you can see, what you could touch here, when all you could see is death, when all you can hear is screams, when all you smell is smoke, when you're in that day and you don't have this, this wisdom and knowledge, when you don't have that the wah, that mark of exemption in Ezekiel 9 and 4, when you lack these things, you're going to be completely bugged out of your mind. And you don't want that to happen, especially, especially if you've been serving the Lord, if you've been, you know, faithful in this truth and you've been ministering and you've been studying the scriptures, meditating on the precepts, you don't want to find yourself in a moment with no faith. What, what have you been doing with your life, Jake? What have you been doing if you haven't been building your faith in the prophecies and the scriptures and the salvation of Yahweh Shai Mashiach? So I can end it there. Um, let me get one more. This is back in, back in second Ezra chapter seven. This is verse 43. It says, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time. The day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past and temperance is at an end, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. So the day of doom is going to be the end of this time, which we know the word doom means judgment. Judgment day is coming. And, you know, we look forward to judgment. We look forward to Yahweh Shai coming back because ultimately we, we know that we believe in the resurrection, we believe in his blood and we believe that our sins are going to be covered. And if you don't believe that, then your judgment is going to be destruction. But it says the day of doom shall be the end of this time. It doesn't say, you know, we're going to have a relaxing, fun vacation resort. And then the Lord's going to come back and just beam us up from, from a vacation, man. We're going to be delivered from a great destruction. I can't stress that enough. Brothers, we go through this pretty much every day. This is a, a daily topic, the destruction of Babylon the Great. So, if you're not preparing your mind for destruction, I don't, you know, hey, man, 
just pray on it. And uh, like I said, this is a, a doctrine that's extremely worldly, but there's some jakes in the truth that still believe this, man. They still believe, well, I, I know I'm an Israelite, so I'm good. You're not good, Jake. None of us are good until Yahweh Shai comes back. That's the mentality we all need to have. So, Abaratazah, this lesson was edifying to the elect. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash, double honest the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect.